What is up, guys? McDouble's back here with a brand new video, and today we've got an oldie but a goodie, my friends. We have Turtle Wow with potentially, if not literally, their biggest patch notes yet. The patch is not out quite yet, but it is coming, and it has some of the juiciest cooks I've ever seen. It is extremely exciting and worthy of talking about. What I will do is show you guys some of the new things that we haven't seen on this channel in a bit, with a brand new goblin and brand new high elf starter zone experience, but primarily I'm going to show you gameplay as well as talk about and show you the brand new changes coming and give you my take on it in this video. This is genuinely hype. Um, I I really can't believe it, so hope you guys enjoy, and let's jump right in. Okay guys, patch 1.17.2. Turtle Wow! If you don't know what Turtle Wow is and you're in the private server scene, that's pretty freaking surprising. Turtle Wow is a World of Warcraft vanilla plus server. They're probably one of the oldest ones, at least with the oldest still standing, and they are also definitely the most successful, sporting anywhere from a minimum of 3,000 active players on just one of their servers, active and willing to slash who. They're not even hiding it. That's how confident they are. It's a massive place player base, you can play hardcore, you can play PvP, you can play PvE, custom raids, custom dungeons, a lot and most of which I've shown on this channel, and I've always said the only thing Turtle WoW is missing is custom class changes that actually embrace Vanilla WoW, but come custom nonetheless, because as we all know, Vanilla Balance was bad. And I don't just mean bad like, oh, when something is strong, I mean more bad like when most things suck. I mean, really? really, really bad. But there is still a vanilla feel to it, and you have to capture that. It's very, very important. And one of the things I love so much about this in particular, what we're about to go over, is that they do such a good job, I'll tell you right away, of actually making their changes feel vanilla. As someone who also does dev and design work in this sphere, I can tell you that that is not an easy feat, and that the average person quite honestly would have gone way too far with their changes, and perhaps I'm not even sure if I could have done it. As someone who thinks that I'm actually not too bad at this type of stuff, I don't even know if I could have done it, and I think that's what put the biggest smile on my face. Love went into this, okay? But I feel like it was very important to set it up the way that I did. This is not a tiny thing. So, Let's begin. As I go through this, I'll show you different gameplay. At the end of the video, I'll show you the Goblin and the uh, High Elf brand new zones. Uh, just a quick snippet, of course. Uh, but primarily, I'd like to start off by going over brand new changes for Druid, Hunter, Mage, Pally, Priest, Rogue, Shaman, Warlock, and Warrior on TWoW. And talk about how crazy this is. Now, they do talk about some general gameplay changes coming. I'm going to TLDR this. Uh, the weapon skill formula gets altered to make it a little bit less min-maxi. In the sense that it was kind of hidden from you as well. Um, you know, really most people don't know what weapon skill even does, right? And so what they're trying to do is make it a little bit more intuitive. Down to the throwing weapons, though. Uh, throwing weapons no longer essentially have charges. They don't work like arrows, right? They now spend durability. You only get one. When it breaks, it breaks like a normal weapon. They add some hyper-specific stuff to their own content with the goblin brainwashing device change. Tea with sugar and Nordenar herbal tea. Won't talk about that because you really have to be playing on it to understand it. Uh, and same thing with the bow spec thing that came from their Hyjal zone, which if you don't know, they have a custom Hyjal zone, and it's extremely high quality. They've also got racial changes. This is going to be the only point of contention in my video. As you guys know, I try to be honest. If I give you the good, I give you the bad. I don't like being suppressed in that regard, because honesty is key, uh, and transparency is key if you want to be successful in any uh, sphere. Trying to keep things away from people is definitely not the way to go. Uh, in this regard, I would say the vast majority of their changes are quite good, but I would say there are two sussy bits, and we'll just get to them as we get to them. So, in general, they reduce the amount of weapon skill granted from racials from plus five to plus three. Uh, this goes hand in hand up here with the weapon skill formula being altered. I will put the link to this in the uh, description below, so if you want to actually read up on this weapon skill formula thing and get a better idea of it, you definitely can. For human, though, what they do is they give the perception skill, which if you don't know, that allows you to have a higher chance of seeing things that are in stealth, a 2% increased physical and spell crit chance uh, increase for the duration. I think human
Perception's probably one of the best races in all of Vanilla WoW. People sleep on Perception, by the way, because rogues are nuts, um, and I don't think they needed that. Uh, however, Human Spirit, giving you 5% of your mana regen to continue during combat alongside the Spirit, that's pretty freaking sick. Uh, Stone Form now reduces physical damage taken by 5% rather than increasing armor by 10. That's a straight buff for pretty much everybody. Uh, literally, I think it's literally everybody. Like, even if you're in full plate with a shield, I think that might still be better. Uh, Night Elf, though, Quickness, now increases your attack and casting speed and movement speed by 1%. Don't sleep on the movement speed. You're chasing some dude in the open world, and you might catch him, you know? Uh, but overall, that's pretty cool. Casting speed's hard to come by, actually. And the fact that Night Elves get free casting speed is actually nuts. 1% is not a small thing. So that's actually a pretty big deal. Uh, Shadow Meld now completely changes. It persists now for two seconds after being canceled or moving. That's really insane. We have to assume that it still breaks if you attack, right? Because if it doesn't, it's just vanish in that regard. Uh, but it might. It might still persist. And if that's the case, the fact that they increase the cooldown to three minutes is gonna make a lot more sense. Otherwise, what we're really seeing here is you can Shadow Meld every three minutes. It works exactly like vanilla Shadow Meld, except when you leave it, uh, you are actually still stealth for two seconds, giving you a little bit of leeway to gank somebody, which I think is still actually pretty good. Although, I have to admit, if you can't stay in stealth, for those extra two seconds and attack somebody. It's a kind of a weird nerf, right? Because original vanilla Shadow Meld is fine. It's actually modern, you know, after like Wrath or whatever, maybe it was even BC Shadow Meld, that was the real problem, right? Because then if you were a stealth class, you had to play Night Elf because Shadow Meld acted as a vanish because you could Shadow Meld stealth. Uh, and that's the problem, right? Because of what? Because you can use it in combat. So I'm not seeing anything about this tooltip that says now I can use Shadow Meld in combat. Maybe you can. Again, there's a lot of questions on this one. I don't actually have the answer answer, but there's at least three different ways to look at the potential of this one, so that's something to keep in mind. When we go down to Gnome, Escape Artist cooldown increased from one minute to one and a half. Don't like that. I don't think anybody's really complaining about Escape Artist. Maybe Gnome Warrior too strong in PvP? I don't know. Um, it's not gonna kill anything, though. It'll be fine. But they now get a brand new racial to replace resistance, uh, arcane resistance, because all the resistances you'll see as I go down have been removed from racials. That's big, because some resistances are garbage, and others are insane, so it's too disproportional. But Disassembler was added, giving damage dealt versus mechanicals, uh, you 5% more damage in that regard. Uh, that's a really big deal. There's gonna be a, quite a few places where a mechanical will show up, and you'll just straight up do more damage. I mean, obviously, no more gone, uh, uh, which is <laughs> which is like a little thing, right? Uh, but it will happen, and that's pretty cool. Now, going down to the High Elf, that's the custom alliance race uh, that we see on Turtle WoW. Gweldor Eye Meditation has a small rework. So before, uh, you were given 4% max mana, 6 rage, and 13 energy. Now you generate 10% total mana, 20 rage, or 50 energy over 5 seconds. Uh, and so you also get a unique version of this spell, depending on if you have mana, rage, or energy. And it had a cooldown reduction as well. Maybe it's not so much, but it's cool, because you don't see a lot of stuff like this. Uh, I'll definitely take it. Going down to the Orc, uh, they nerfed all the Horde Racials, and one of these I will disagree with, right? Um, the rest I won't. Blood Fury now increases attack power and damage dealt by magical spells and effects by an amount equal to your level and reduces healing effects on you by 25%. Hardiness nerfed to 15% duration on stun effects, down from 25. Uh, and it's not a resistance thing now, it's just duration. So that's actually a big, big nerf, right? In some ways, and in other ways, it's more consistent. You know, if you were to resist the stun, that's really freaking polarizing. If you reduce the duration, though, uh, it's always working. Uh, Troll, Berserking, now grants 10 to 15% attack and casting speed, depending on how badly you are hurt, instead of 10 to 30. Big nerf. Big, big nerf. And Troll has always been Sleeper, because no one wants to play a Troll. Sleeper in PvE, that is. So that's a big, big nerf. But, Regeneration now increases health regen by 20%, up from 10, but now allows 25% of total health regen to continue in combat, instead of 10. So, that's going up a lot. Uh, I think a Fury Troll Warrior, uh, we'll go over briefly some of the talent changes coming. Could be really crazy, actually, if some of these numbers are uh, performing well together. We'll have to see. Undead, Will of the Forsaken's duration has been reduced from 5 to 4, and it can't be activated while under crowd control. Omega Giga nerf. That's like an Omega Giga nerf, because what this means is that when you play Undead... First of all, this means Human Warlocks and Gnome Warlocks are not complete garbage now, which is interesting, 
right? However, it's an Omega Giga nerf because 9 out of 10 players are not going to play with this properly, right? So for them, this just sucks. Like, what this really means is when the Warlock casts Fear, you need to cast Willow the Forsaken right before that happens so that you're immune to it. But doubly speaking, what this actually means is that when a Psychic Scream or an Intimidating Shout comes out, you have to be able to predict that, which in some situations is quite literally impossible. And I mean that. Like, no matter how good you are, you are taking a Hail Mary on the Willow the Forsaken at that point. So, in that regard, Undead is just not as good. And that's not good because Undead only has Will of the Forsaken, typically. Except now, with the removal of Shadow Resistance, you now get Vengeance. Damage against Humanoids and Undead is increased by 2%. This was a big deal to give them because everything is pretty much a Humanoid or an Undead when it comes to late game and WoW. Just about. You got some LEs and stuff like that, but that's, that's pretty much the truth, right? Humanoid and Undead is the majority of monsters you will fight, besides Beasts, and 2% free damage against all of them means undead should perform in pve in a way that you haven't seen before so that's pretty cool now we get to the one that i really hate uh like the undead one I i'll take it because they did have too much of a monopoly on the warlock class um, and also, it's, like, not super healthy. And this is kind of healthy, right? Because now you have to be skillful to use it. I will take that, even though it is a Giga nerf. But this one I hate. Uh, War Stomp's stun duration has been reduced from 2 seconds to 1.5. I don't think Tarin's even playable. I know it sounds like a crazy over-exaggeration, but I think that you miss out on too much. If you're a Tarin Druid, you're not getting a lot of casts off. And you need that, right? You're not getting a Roots off maybe some of the times now. Because sometimes you have latency on private servers. And I know it's like, oh, you can't play it design around latency it's like to hell you can't right you're, you're making a private server and a large majority of the people playing or i would say at least a large portion that you should not upset are going to be in places where they're not getting you know 30 ping right or 10 or 20 ping and you have to make sure they're not just getting you know pooped on because of a oversight change i think this is bad i think a lot of people will now no longer play tarin I think that War Stomp is not overpowered, so I don't, I don't like this, I'll just say that. Exit Strategy's cooldown reduced from 5 minutes to 3 minutes. That is their mini sprint that goblins get, that's a huge good thing, because I didn't like 5 minutes, it felt really weak to me. Uh, prospecting now grants mining and jewelry skill instead of just mining. Uh, I didn't know they were adding jewel crafting to uh, freaking Turtle WoW, so huge. And uh, I don't remember what Chemical Super Freak was, but if you knew, it's removed. So this is overall really good racial changes. As I said, I don't like giving humans any extra offensive power, but I can kind of understand what they were trying to do there. I just don't think it was right. Unless I'm underestimating their change to weapon skills. And I could be, because I have to play it and I have to deep dive it mentally more to really understand what's happening. I won't lie to because you. Because right now, what's so good about being human is that you get so much weapon skill with so many different things. Um, and that's obviously a big boon right now. So, with a nerf to that, it might not be as big of a deal, in which case I'm wrong, and that's fine. But I think you can't really get out of this one. This one was just a mistake, unfortunately. 1.5 second stun. The cast time, if there's- I believe there's a cast time in the vanilla version. Yeah, it's a 0.5 second cast, so you're getting a 1 second stun, in a sense right? It, it's just sus. I, I'm not really too into that one. Anyway, we move on and we have a lot of changes to different classes and this gets rather complex and kind of uh, big in a lot of different ways. As I said, I did in fact link this in the description below, but what I want to do is just go over the talent trees directly um, because they change them and you'll notice it immediately as a vanilla player and what I can do is just point out some of the crazy stuff rather than just like listing off everything that you see on these, you know, this crazy big page, which by the way, uh, you should should read it. I have gone over this entire thing with some friends, um, so I've read it all, or had it read to me, and <laughs> given my take on it in that regard, it's uh, really a big deal when you have devs that are willing to be this transparent, and there being, you know, all cards on the table, and that I really appreciate that. But to the talent trees we go. I will link this in the description as well. The Turtle Database does have a talent calc. Big, big deal. I'm going to go through every single class, but I'm only going to go over the highlights, so it shouldn't be too crazy. I will also put timestamps in the description below so you can pick the classes you prefer and skip the ones you don't care about, right? So let's go with Warrior first, and right away, you're going to see some different stuff. Um, this is big. I have played every vanilla class. The only class in the trilogy series that I didn't make it to max level with uh, was Priest, and I'm going to remedy that, I think, very soon. Of course, I still know every spell on Priest and every talent and everything, but it's just I could never stomach leveling a Priest. 
tree, so I had to know what everything did to be any good at PvP. You'll notice in the arm, we'll go from left to right. In the arms tree, you've got stuff you're pretty much used to with the rend damage, with the uh, rage points when you change stances, that's so good. And we might go over some of this stuff and it might be good and I might gloss over it just because it's less exciting. Uh, so that's that. We have the deep wounds. Uh, you get counter attack, a strike that becomes active after parrying an opponent's attack. It does 40 damage and immobilizes the target. This was a survival hunter skill. Uh, and it is currently an arms warrior skill, which is very fascinating because they have this and overpower now, and it's a root. They get a root. So obviously it's a lot better against melees, but what you're going to end up seeing, I think, with the arms warriors is that they're going to have a very powerful playstyle against things like rogues right now, where they don't even have to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with you, where they could just rend and deep wounds and kite you with things like counterattack and hamstring. We have the uh, two-handed weapon spec. You get uh, increased skill with all two-handed weapons, which is pretty cool. We have the sweeping strikes. Raises the damage done per extra rage spent on execute by up to 60%. And now this actually has a bit of a caveat to it. So execute and TWOW with this change actually always has a cooldown now. And the only way to reduce that cooldown, as you'll see in the next tree, will be to play Fury right? Um, and so what it's going to mean is that you get less executes off as arms, but they're going to hit a lot harder when you use them optimally with lots of rage. Uh, at the higher tiers, by the way, because of the way rage works in vanilla, um, it actually scales based on damage done. And so what that means is that as you get higher and higher up in the tiers, you generate a lot more rage than you te necessarily would spend, let's just say. Uh, so something like this means you can always prioritize the biggest possible execute, doing 60% more damage with the extra rage spent. Improved slam now also reduces the global cooldown of slam pretty interesting this is might be the biggest one master of arms you used to have to actually pick three different talents that did this it's all wrapped into one now plus they added pole arm rather than it being pole axe so axe is the same mace is the same sword is the same but pole arm now gives you up to two extra yards while using a pole arm this is where i think and my friend brought this up that you can really go crazy with a pole arm in pvp alongside the deep wounds the improved rend and then parrying like one thing right and you'll parry daggers man it's gonna happen uh and then you can root them uh and you can still attack them from two yards away while they're dying to your bleeds and they're rooted. We're going to see some really degenerate things from the highest tier players with arms, and I like that. Uh, we've also got what we had before, improved discipline, reducing the cooldown of stuff by a major amount. You get more rage. That more rage, by the way, technically... Um, is going to help you a little bit with precision cut, and then of course you have the mortal strike. So, moving on to fury, I said troll fury might be really good, here's how it might be. You get your cruelty, which is pretty good, 5% crit. Uh, you get your dual wield spec, right? Uh, also now increases your chance to hit with your offhand weapon by 10%, pretty insane. Going on down, improved shouts, it's coupled, piercing howl, blood craze, okay? 6% of your total health over 6 seconds when you're crit, pretty good. Uh, and as we go down, you get your Enrage for more damage. And we'll actually clear this tree over here. Keep going. Reduce the cooldown of Execute. Fury will pretty much be able to go back to spamming it more often. You get your Death Wish. You're immune to fear effects. But lowers your armor and all resistances by 20%. Okay, we're cooking. Reduce that cooldown of Whirlwind. We get down the Flurry for more, um, as you might know it, Haste, right? And then we have this. Blood Drinker. Your critical strikes with abilities, while under the effects of an Enrage, a Death Wish, or a Recklessness, now causes your next 5 melee attacks to heal you for 2% of your maximum health. Let me make this understood. That's 10% max health. You're getting 10% just off autoing, essentially. You're getting 6% off being crit. And then if you're playing Troll, you're getting a lot more natural regen just by playing the game. Then if you couple that with this version of Bloodthirst, which says dealing 80 damage to the person plus 30% attack power, and you suffer a self-inflicted wound for your recklessness, now we're getting synergy. You're hurting yourself, but Bloodthirst is hitting far harder than it's ever hit before, and then you're healing it back up. You're going to have a little bit of a juggernaut on Furies right now that is going to make them incredibly hard to kill due to pretty strong sustain if this is done right, and I have to assume it is until we can actually play it ourselves. So, that is a very exciting niche that's finally being truly fulfilled. Uh, going on the prod, a lot of it is exactly what you would expect. I mean, you have a uh, chance to refund the Rage Cost of Revenge, which is really, really good. Intervene gives you immunity to movement and parrying effects, which is pretty cool. But it's a tank, you know, it's prot warrior tank, and uh, it might be that way for tanks and stuff as we go through them. So let's go back. Now let's hit Taladin, bro. This is a pretty big one. And of course, we're starting on the left with Holy. So you have your Divine Strength and your Divine Intellect. And now you get Holy Judgment. Casting Judgment 
reduces the cast time of your next holy light by one second. Not only is this good for Rhett, because you can use this in PvP, and you're going to go down here anyway for the 10% strength. But it's also incredible if you were just, oh, I don't know, trying to allow Holy Paladins to actually fight in melee range and be a bit of a combat healer. Okay, let's keep it up. Sanctity Aura is now in the Holy Pally tree. It might already be like this on TWOW, but in original vanilla, I believe it was Rhett. So that's still interesting. But as we take that, we have more healing, right? We have the armor talent with the lay on hands, blah, blah, blah. Uh oh, ironclad increases your healing power by 2% of your armor. I'm not wearing a dress anymore with that. That's pretty cool. And then we keep going on. You see some stuff you're used to seeing. They did nerf illumination. You get less mana, I believe now, if I recall. Uh, Holy Shock, though. This is crazy. Baseline for Holy Shock. It says casting Holy Shock has a chance to reset its own cooldown. However, it gets crazier. You take Divine Favor now for 30% crit with Holy Shock. That is just crazy. And then you look at this new ability or talent, Blessed Strikes. Crusader Strike, which is a baseline ability for Pallies and Turtle WoW, by the way, um, has a chance, 100%, to reset the cooldown of Holy Shock. And Holy Strike, which is another unique ability on uh, TWOW, uh, I'll actually say right now, Holy Strike is slightly different now. I believe Holy Strike still works like a Heroic Strike, so it augments your next attack, but it now heals everybody in your party or everybody around you what have you and it gives them more mana as well so you're actually healing everybody and giving everybody resources with any spec of pally but in this particular case it's really good because it all synergizes right because you get 150 percent more on the healing effect but anyway as you're playing the game in melee range with crusader strike doing damage you're constantly resetting the cooldown of holy shock and just again machine gunning them out this is so cool i almost made a pally just for that other than that you have a uh, holy power move down which is interesting but then you have daybreak now critically healing an ally leaves daybreak on them for 12 seconds daybreak increases healing from flash of light holy light and holy shock by 20 percent but also gives them five percent more health that's just powerful because you're going to be critting all the time because of divine favor and because of holy power so uh crazy synergistic holy pallies on the menu in a variety of different ways right now dudes because you're healing everybody okay prop pally now gets this that's probably the biggest thing <laughs> bulwark of the righteous you now bash the target with your shield doing huge holy Holy damage, by the way, uh, non-resistible, and reducing the damage you take by 40% for 12 seconds. Holy Pally also has a taunt on Turtle Wow, uh, so this is broken, actually. This is huge. They also have this crazy version of Holy Shield, 50% block for 10 seconds on the menu. Uh, there's a couple more things in here, but those are the two big ones. And then we have Rat Pally. Rat Pally is viable, and it's actually too strong on Turtle Wow. Might not be that way uh, with this patch. They might be a little bit more equal, which is nice. But main thing that I would say to look out for, Crusading Strikes, right? You have this concept of zeal, which comes from using Crusader Strike. So you get more Crusader Strike damage, and zeal increases your attack and casting speed by pretty much 10%. Holy Strike also now infuses you with Holy Might, giving you 20% increased strength for 20 whole seconds. Completely busted. The whole class is absolutely goaded, like really, really good. Okay, Hunter, this gets real. Beast Mastery is kind of the same uh, as it's always been. Uh, Marksman is slightly different. Um, you get something like Piercing Shots now for a bleed on your target. You get Wild Quiver. They call it Endless Quiver now to have a 6% chance to fire an additional shot. Those are pretty good changes overall. They're going to have more consistent damage, and that's always going to be good. But if you go over to Survival Hunter, you get some crazy shit right off the bat. I'm just going to say the words, right? Um, first of all, the whole tree is different. It's all 100% melee, okay? So you start off by getting more damage. You're reducing the cost of traps, right? Uh, this now increases the crit of all your melee abilities, not just Mongoose Bite, Raptor Strike, and maybe Wing Clip, I think it was. That's a big deal because now you have Carve, which is an AoE ability that shares a cooldown with Multi-Shot. Huge, huge. You still have Deterrence, but it's in the middle of the tree right here. Uh, that's pretty neat. Uh, planning ahead. This is interesting. The damage of your fire traps are increased by 25% if the trap is not triggered. For the first five seconds after being placed so uh, if you can actually set that up that's a lot of extra damage moving on down we have uh this one stinging nettle lacing huge talent mongoose bite and triggered fire traps now apply serpent sting for 40 percent of the duration but you still get the damage that is crazy good synergy they're making it to where something like serpent sting doesn't require you to go back out into range to hit it and then come back into melee increasing your uptime and allowing you to just overall feel more effective and cohesive so really good change there you get the trap mastery it's what you would expect to some degree you now get rapid strikes uh rapid fire essentially now works with your melee attack speed and 
Raptor Strike and Mongoose Bite cooldowns are reduced by one second. Lightning Reflexes now gives you melee AP equal to 100% of your agility, which is kind of busted actually. Mongoose Bite gets 30% more damage. And then we get Untamed Trapper. Your Fire Trap's damage is now increased by your melee attack power. Oh, now melee attack power has a purpose in that regard, right? And it allows you to use your traps while in combat. Whoa! Whoa, whoa, whoa! You mean I have a full fleshed out melee hunter rotation with things like Immolation Trap and things like Raptor Strike and the Mongoose Bite? Uh, okay. We're cooking. We're cooking. And I can do AoE with the Explosive Trap and the Carve? Okay! We're cooking, boys! That's worth playing. That's going to be really, really cool. Rogue, my friends. Rogue actually just get some changes. First of all, poison rogues on the menu. They give you a form of Envenom. It's a little underwhelming. It's like half of the BC and Venom, right? Uh, you essentially get 25% more effectiveness and application chance with your poisons, but this maybe is stronger than I think, so I'll take it. 28 seconds of that. Obviously, you have increased debuff slots, making your poisons not so bad. They have their own version of Taste for Blood now. It says Rupture actually increases your overall damage by 10%, and the buff of that is equal to the damage over time duration of the Rupture itself. So if you do a 5 point, you get 10% more damage damage for something probably like 16 to 20 seconds i can't quite remember which is a lot of extra damage right and they're trying to make more things genuinely viable vigor got changed that's actually a really big deal as well uh so this now only gives you 10 energy not 20 but now you have a 100 percent chance to gain five energy when you apply a poison so that's a lot better uh it's going to increase your uptime overall with all of your attacks just in general by a lot you can only get it every eight seconds, but it doesn't matter. Like, extra energy is extra energy. So overall, pretty big, uh, just in general. And you have stuff like Relentless Strikes here. Like, this is a really, really big deal. For the Combat Rogue, I never liked Combat Rogue. You have your Blade Flurry. So you've got your AoE. That's pretty neato. You have Improved Backstab here now. And uh, that's pretty interesting. Uh, I would say, again, I, I'm not too into combat, but I know it's a lot better than it was. You get 50% more offhand weapon damage. You now have a new ability, Surprise Attack. A Surprise Strike that does 120% weapon damage, only usable after the target dodges. Uh, awards one combo point. I don't know when you're ever getting that off, but hey, that's a Turtle WoW exclusive right there. Uh, you, interestingly enough, get increased skill right here, up to five, with even axes, which they can now use. Oh, and by the way, Blade Flurry gives 10% attack speed, so you use it in single target as well alongside your uh, adrenaline rush and you're just pumping really really fast by the way hack and slash works with an axe again that didn't come out till wrath and close quarters combat works with maces now so every weapon type has a purpose which is very very cool now on the subtlety rogue you get some cooks with subtlety rogue uh right off the bat if we go on down a bit smoke bomb is now in the game so creates a cloud of thick smoke and an eight yard radius around you for eight seconds all targets inside the smoke have a 20 percent reduced chance to be hit by attacks and spells for the duration Okay, but does it make it to where you can't target in or out of it? The reduced chance to hit is not too bad if that's all it is by itself, but not super exciting. Hemorrhage, of course, is fine, and we're going to get some support with it down here uh, with this bloody mess, which is reducing the energy cost, but now also giving you 100% more damage bonus uh, with your hemorrhage. That's pretty big. Uh, as we go down, we get some other cool stuff. Uh, irritating Agent reduces all damage dealt by target hit by blind by 6%. This is apparently guaranteed to be applied even if the target is immune to poisons or blind. Blind, uh, is resisted or misses and I think that's very cool because that just means straight up you blind somebody when they come out of it essentially because you're gonna break it fast I'm assuming with this they get less damage done. so there's a lot of control very supporty by the way you have your prep you have Dust of Disappearance, okay? I, I don't know if this is new or if it was already in, uh, you know, Turtle Wow's version of Rogue. It's new to, you know, in general because it's in Turtle Wow. Tricks of the Trade, pretty broken uh, that this is actually in here. Your opening and finishing moves have 100% chance and 20% chance per combo point to increase your party's chance to crit by 2%, so 4% total with two stacks. So you're getting something like a niche, one might say, uh, for Subtlety Rogue and PvE, which is that you would bring a sub rogue just for Tricks of the Trade because 4% crit is so good uh and then down here honor among thieves even better physical crits in combat by your party members will grant you five energy every two seconds essentially and that means you will also have a way to keep spamming that hemo and you might not suck on your personal damage front and then lastly exploit vulnerability is their capstone you could say now final talent a marking strike that does 135 percent weapon damage and informs your party members of the target's vulnerabilities increasing their damage done by 15 percent and giving you of all things two combo points so you're a support now so you could play sub rogue in pvp and do your dgen pvp things and everyone loves that 
but you're not worthless anymore in PvE. You have a genuine purpose as a support. And that is such good design, dude. Such good design. You take a sub rogue now for this you know, moment of crazy burst and this consistent 4% crit. It's that simple. It is actually that simple and perhaps smoke bomb works on creatures and then that's actually not bad either. So very well done by the Turtle Wow team. A lot of people, I want to make this clear, would not have done this. I think most people, I don't know if any other people would have done this, which is why it's so exciting. Almost everybody would have just said, let me give them more and more damage. Maybe, you know, Shadow Dance, right? You know, on God, Shadow Dance would have been put in the game, right? From any else possibly including me that's why i really want to stress the skill of the design with some of these changes priest right so getting 25 percent more wand damage and 10 percent more chance to hit with your wand including more mana is not small it's actually huge uh, of course this is more of a leveling thing than anything else but still pretty big coming on down you'll see talents were shifted around by the way stuff like divinity and stuff like that so in that regard you'll have to kind of remember what the old trees look like but some things were definitely shifted uh the disc tree is pretty interesting it starts off kind of mad first of all uh inner fire i believe it gives you spell power now which is a big deal so increasing the effects of that is more damage uh inner focus uh giving you more crit on your next spell that's big because by the way i didn't mention it disc is a dps now so you'll find out what that means soon um you get more mana regen while casting you shouldn't be going oom um, they really try to remedy that holy fire has a hundred percent chance to increase your holy damage by 12 percent. that's a lot of extra holy damage and searing light is over here oh man damaging holy and disc spell crits have a hundred percent chance to make smite instant cast and cost no mana huge now we start getting to the omega giga cooks right and like if you thought it couldn't be better it, you're wrong uh resurgent shield when your power word shield is broken you get holy spell power equal to five percent of the shield's total absorb amount and it refunds 25 percent of the base mana cost this might be something like 50 or something like that 50 or 40 spell power that's not bad but then we also get well first of all enlighten gives three percent casting speed again a rare commodity very good but we get enlight bring a party member under your tutelage Whenever you cast a damaging disc or holy spell, you have a 15% chance to burn them. That's the person, your party member, for 4% of their total health as holy damage, non-resistible, and increase your and their spell damage and healing by 10%. So, it's so weird, dude. Like, as you deal damage, you kill your friend, but give them more damage. However, if you use this on yourself, you still kill yourself, I'm assuming, but you get more bonus spell damage and bonus healing. So it's not useless if you don't have anybody to put it on or if you just don't have anybody safe to put it on. Cool, cool, cool. I like it from a design perspective. Will it be too griefy? We'll find out, but that's kind of why I'm playing this because this is a grief spec and this is going to be super fun. Force of Will, by the way, increases your spell damage and the critical strike chance of offensive spells by 5% broken by the way and you get a bunch more absorption on power word shield with that one but now we get cataclysm chastise with a twist chastise the target dealing damage and disorienting them for three seconds that's good for pvp ah this it gets better if you chastise an ally their attack and casting speed is increased by 15 percent, so you can support yes you still do damage to them you just don't disorient them but this cannot be used on allies with less than 80 percent health so that's a really big deal because technically i can't kill people with this but I can kill people with this, and I will. Holy Priest is kind of the same as far as I was able to see, except for losing some talents to Disc. Um, but, you know, it's a healer, and it's one of the best in all of vanilla, so, you know, it's still probably very, very good. By the way, Shadow Priest, kind of the same, but it does get better. Shadow Priest is not bad in PvP, but it's kind of the same spec as it was before. They do have Mind Seer now to do AoE damage, or maybe they had it like prior to this patch, but I'm just saying Turtle Wow gave them Mind Seer. You have the unique Turtle Wow proclaimed champion, but that's always been there. It might have been augmented. All right, moving on. Shaman. Things get very interesting in Shaman. First of all, you'll notice some talents got swapped around the different trees. If we start with Ellie, you get your 5%, uh, you know, more damage essentially. You get uh, some other crap you don't really care too much about. You go for your crit, 6% more crit. Okay, we're cooking. Uh, you get more damage with fire totems, right? Even more damage to fire totems. Now we get electrify. Your lightning bolt and chain lightning causes you to be charged with electricity, increasing your nature damage dealt by up to 10% and your critical bonus damage by uh, up to 100%, bro, because you have to stack it up. Holy 
crap, that's going to make you hit hard. I play a lot of Ellie Shaman in vanilla in my old days, and this is about to make you crazy because vanilla obviously gives you the best version of Elemental Mastery to ever exist. And it actually just got better because it now gives you two stacks of Electrify when you use it. And of course, your next spell has 100% crit chance and doesn't cost mana. And I just love this version of Ellie Mastery. You can one shot people as soon as you freaking get it. Uh, but also, Flames Guidance says Flame Shock has more range. Uh, and casting Flame Shock will now cause Searing Totem to focus that target. So you have some control over that, which is cool. So Ellie Shaman looks like it's really good. Enhancement Shaman has a lot of tank stuff in it. So you will be able to try tanking, I believe. Uh, but it also still has the 2H playstyle. You have stuff like Totemic Alignment, though, giving you 60% of the threat generated by your totems. Brand new abilities like Lightning Strike, causing 60% weapon damage and 20% weapon damage as nature. And this strike also triggers an empowered version of your active shield, instantly consuming one charge. That's really neat. There is water shield, by the way, so you can use it for mana. You've got your flurry for 30% attack speed right there. Storm strike with an updated icon. Elemental weapons, by the way, is a little bit different. Uh, Flame tongue gives you 15% more fire damage. Rock biter for tanks, I'm assuming 10% reduced damage taken. The frost print one's super interesting. 25% more proc chance on the effect. And if they're affected by frost shock when you hit them with the effect, it is guaranteed to crit. People might switch to that actually a lot more often for PvP. Frost print is not that bad, and this just makes it a lot better and then wind fury i believe is still just wind fury in that regard uh enhancing totems is really cool stone skin totem now increases block block amount uh, and its damage reduction that it gives you is increased by 30 percent it also increases the effect of strength of the earth and grace of air totems combining the effects uh, from previous talents and reduces the cooldown of your grounding totem by two seconds overall a busted talent it's doing a lot actually and then we have weapon mastery which is doubling down on the storm strike and lightning strike because before it was like uh physical damage but now it's all the damage you deal with with all weapons and storm strike and lightning strike so because they technically benefit from your weapon right they're doubling uh up on that so it's going to make storm strike and lightning strike hit a lot harder and then they have a very very well designed version of bloodlust that's so warcraft 3 so vanilla fly into a frenzy increasing your melee and spell casting speed by 15 percent for 30 seconds only you and while you're under the effects of this your melee crits increase the melee range and spell casting speed of your party members by five so the more you crit, the higher uptime you have on essentially a mini bloodlust effect for your party. Now, Resto is probably one of the cooler uh, changes to healers here because they get Spirit Link, which I thought was a Tarin special uh, racial for shamans, but it's now here. I don't know what Tarin's going to get. Uh, but you link your target ally and their two closest allies. When the link targets take damage, 30% is distributed among the other linked allies. Really cool. Now we've got Mage, and my god, they giga cooked on Mage. And we're starting with the best, in my opinion. So, Arcane Missiles, okay, that's gonna be a theme. Arcane Concentration, okay, we're still, you know, doing what we're doing. You have the same version of one spec over here that Disc had, okie dokie. But now we get Arcane Rupture. Rupture your target with Concentrated Arcane Force, dealing Arcane damage, and increasing the damage and mana cost of your Arcane Missiles for six seconds. They actually kept it vanilla, man. It's all about the Arcane Missiles. I was telling a friend of mine, they could have been lazy and just given you Arcane Blast. But everyone does that, they say, what if I just give you spells from a future expansion even wow blizzard did it man turtle wow didn't do that and that is design skill so grats man so arcane missiles damage plus you get another spell to cast really really nice six percent flat crit with your arcane spells okie dokie that's really good temporal convergence arcane missiles now has a 15 percent chance to reset the cooldown of arcane rupture and cause it to refund its base mana cost on its next cast so you are able every 15 seconds to reset the cooldown of this spell and keep spamming arcane missiles going on down accelerated arcana arcane missiles now benefits from effects and increased casting speed whoa that's shooting super fast it also now reduces the time between missiles and total duration by that amount whoa in addition arcane ability cooldowns are reduced by a percentage equal to the amount of the casting speed increase what the hell and your casting speed is just straight up increased with arcane spells by five percent like why like that is a cook you get 100 percent more critical damage bonus which is just insane uh, like really insane arcane instability landing a damaging arcane spell has a 25% chance to uncontrollably erupt consuming 2% of your base mana really cool to do 25% more damage keeping the mana consumption theme but not doing the arcane blast big resonance cascade your landing damaging arcane spells have a 20% chance to duplicate for 50% of the damage <laughs> what the hell this effect can trigger off itself and duplicated arcane missiles are channeled in tandem with 
with the original cast. <laughs> what the hell? People are going to get literally one shot from arcane missiles sometimes. It's like a wind fury for it. It's insane. They also reworked arcane power. Your casting speed is increased by 35% and it drains 2% of your total mana every second and reduces all mana gain by 75%. If your total mana drops below 10%, you violently combust, killing you. Now, moving on to fire. We still get to be a fire mage doing fire stuff. Uh, we get this version of ignite, which is quite good. We move on down. You have your pyroblast, does pyroblast stuff. Uh, and then we clear the points here so we can keep going down. You get your critical mass, but now you get hot streak, but they give you a different version. Your fireball and fire blast spell crits have a 100% chance to grant you a stack of the hot streak effect. The hot streak effect lowers the cast time of your next pyroblast by 0.5 seconds, stacking 9 time. So you have a lot more leeway. You're not forced to crit twice, for example. Perhaps more importantly, you have leeway on when you can let the pyroblast go. And pyroblast does hit like a truck, right? So that's really, really cool. And then you have this version of combustion on TWOW. Well. Uh, so this is really cool. I think the hot streak effect is going to be very interesting. You're going to see people uh, still being a hard caster, though. They didn't just go degenerate. They just start instant casting them for no reason all the time. You have some more play into it, which is really, really nice. And I think it's very good vanilla-esque design. Now, Frost Mage is just Frost bolt typically right but they make some changes now they give you a brand new ability let's see if i can get to it real quick you have your ice block now you have icicles you draw upon frost ley lines becoming frozen in place but you launch icicles at the enemy causing frost damage every second for five seconds the damage taken has a high chance to shatter your icy prison dealing 30 percent of your base health and damage to you so while you're doing this if you take damage you have a chance to take even more damage right I think this is very tasteful. You know, Frost Mage is a busted class. It's not quite as bad, typically speaking, than Rogue. But uh, in vanilla, it's busted. But in PvE, it's very boring, right? Because you just spam Frost Bolt and you kind of had to play it originally. So what Icicles does is it says, we don't want to make you stronger, really, in a way, right? Because that's not cool. And so what we'll do is we'll give you an ability that, typically speaking, won't be a bother in PvE. That will mix up the PvE rotation and give you a little bit more umph and still make it balanced because, you know... During this, you can't move, right? You're not using it in PvP, typically, unless you have room to burst, because you'll take extra damage and you can't move, right? Uh, and you're probably not able to cancel our macro this, but maybe you can. Uh, maybe not, though. And that's really important to keep in mind. Overall, I like this because, you know, a lot of people would have thought, how do you possibly improve a spec like this uh, in the context of vanilla? And the answer is, typically speaking, you wouldn't be able to unless you were capable of cooking stuff like this. They also give you flash freeze. If your target is immune to freeze effects whenever one is applied, you have a 100% chance to gain flash freeze instead, resetting the cooldown of icicles. Now, this is a huge deal because this actually means that while you're freezing them with frostbite in your rotation, you're resetting the cooldown of icicles and again, dynamically increasing your rotation in a fun way. It also reduces the channel duration and the freeze duration and the time between icicles by 80% for your next cast. Like, very, very cool proc. This is what really makes it that really good, like, highly well designed spell for Frost Mage. So, super excited about all that. right two more to go warlock okay so when we look at warlock we're gonna see again some of the best cooks of all time starting with affliction we move on down first of all improved drains uh you'll notice it's a little bit different because actually as we go down we're gonna see a brand new version of a talent here called soul siphon which now affects pretty much everything it affects drain soul dark harvest and death coil uh increasing their damage by four percent for each affliction effect up to 16 percent if we move to the left curse of agony can be used alongside other curses so you're not punished anymore that's really really nice siphon life your affliction spells now benefit from effects and increase your casting speed whoa reducing the time between ticks and total duration by a hundred percent of that amount and you get six percent free casting speed nutty scaling right there you get your shadow mastery and now you no longer get the mana thing that nobody used you get dark harvest a brand new ability that does more damage over time but it also additionally reduces the time between periodic ticks on your reflection spells uh, on the target by 20 percent. so more channels playing to that theme keeping it vanilla and not just putting haunt now here. We're going to start cooking on unfathomable levels with demonology. First of all, they give you soul entrapment, which means you don't have to actually have a pet if you want to play demonology, which is nuts, actually. So 3% if you do that. Uh, they also combined a lot of things, and they made a lot of things better. So you'll see something like fell intellect. Uh, it adds 35% of your intellect to the intellect of your demons now and allows 75% of your demons' mana regeneration to continue while casting, so they're not going to be ooming, as often at least. Uh, this is really cool because now demonic sacrifice alongside soul entrapment is a choice. 
This means every spec can go petless now, by the way, which is nuts, and you'll really see it over here soon. Uh, but it also means it's like not as decohesive. That's the wrong way of saying it, but Demonic Sacrifice would have been in the middle. You know, when I did my Boom Boy playthrough, I was very disappointed just with the traditional Warlock tree because you had something like this, but then they gave you something like Soul Link, which wants you to have a demon. Whoever originally made this tree on the Blizzard team was high, right? Uh, clearly. So, uh, you know, you get a big boon. Now, some of these effects were also changed. Uh, your imp still at fire damage. Voidwalker gives total health. Succubus now gives you more shadow damage, and Fellhunter gives more mana. Fellhunter will probably never be used, but the other three all have their niche. This is big, and I mean giga big, but it gets better. So you can actually reduce your chance for your demons to be critically struck. That's good for the glancing blows. Uh, improved stones all put together, which is really cool. Uh, as we go down, though, and we clear this tree, uh, we're going to see some interesting stuff. I believe this was a five-point node, and it is a three-point node now. You also get Power Overwhelming. Grants your active demon Power Overwhelming that increases its damage dealt by 20% for 10 seconds, and the demon receives 40% of its health as damage over the duration, essentially giving them a better version of Bestial Wrath. Oh my god. You also have Master Demonologist. This is new. Uh, and it's not new, but it's like the effects are new. If you have an Imp out, you get Casting Speed and Reduced Cost. Huge. It used to be just Fire Damage and Crit. Void Walker is pretty much the same, but you get that Pushback Resistance now. Succubus is all damage, not Shadow Damage. Uh, Fell Hunter, I think, might be the same, except for that last part. 10% chance to get affected by Tainted Blood. I don't know what that is, but okay. Infernal, if you have one out, increases attack and casting speed by 15% and reduces healing taken by 50%. Kind of sus. But then Felguard increases all damage done by 20% and meta costs by 20%. That is insane. Uh, Demonology is literally viable now. You also have Unleashed Potential. Direct damage spells have a 60% chance and your funnel spells a 100% chance to grant your demon Unleashed Potential for 3 seconds. What this does is says your demon gets attack power equal to 60% of your spell power and spell power equal to 15% of your spell power, allowing him to to scale off you in a big big way and then of course you have the soul link which also gives more damage as a turtle wow thing right so demonology is not only very 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 viable in a vanilla way but this move alone was one of the biggest moves in like vanilla private server plus history uh because Again, you can use it in Affliction, you can use it here if you want to go for something but like that. But we're about to get a nutty build out of Destro, and I've always wanted this from Boom Boy. Uh, and I can check it out as soon as I can, right? I already have him at level 60. So you do your normal Destro stuff, right? And I'm not going to pick, like, perfect talents here, but I'm giving you an idea of what's about to go down. You can go all the way down the Con Flag, as you could, but now I can go over here, and I can actually take Demonic Sacrifice. And I can go for 6% more fire damage. And I can hit so hard with Conflag. And I can feel better, too, because I don't have to worry about the pets. I can play a really neat version of Destro. This is really fun. I'm very excited about it. I believe the way it worked before is that you could not actually take the Conflag. I think that's how it might have worked before with the, uh, with the uh, you know, amount of uh, investment. So, really cool change. All right, lastly, Druid. There are some cooks in Druid. They have Sylvan Blessing now, which is like uh, Shadow Priest Soul Tap, I guess. Vengeance is still doing what Vengeance likes to do. You get Moon Conform now, and it's not a capstone. I'm going to get to it. That's cool. Also, Moon Conform just straight up reduces the mana cost of all your spells by 20%. Okay. You get your Alkin Frenzy, which is what you would remember if you take damage. Uh, you'll, you know, get some mana, um, which is neat. Reduces the cast time by 0.5 seconds, dudes. That's huge. All spells crits now give you the blessing of nature reducing the casting time and global cooldown of your next spell any of them by 0.5 you're casting fast uh, moving on down, balance of all things. Damage from insect swarm has a 30% chance to reduce the cast time of starfire by 0.5, and damage from moonfire has a 30% chance to reduce the mana cost of wrath by 50%. So you're not going to maybe be going oom, um, really huge. And now we have eclipse. Wow, they brought it. Uh, align natural and astral energies. Critical strikes with starfire increase nature damage by 25%, and crits with wrath increase arcane damage by 25%. Each effect lasts 15 seconds with a 30 second cooldown. Both effects cannot occur at once, so you cycle between two. Lots of people that play Druid love this version of Boomkin. It is now in Turtle WoW, which is really, really sick. There was a sus change um, with this one. So for Feral, they give you open wounds, which is essentially just a ridiculous amount of claw damage. Most people are saying Shred will still be better. Here's what I'd like to say. 
I would like to assume that by making a change like this, that they've internally tested Claw having some applicability in some way that makes it preferable over Shred because of this talent. Whether it's because of, uh, you know, wanting to make the leveling experience smoother, whether it's a PvP thing, because not all the time as a Feral can you easily get behind a target, making them maybe just not as good, uh, I don't know. But I'd like to assume one of those things are probably the reason that Open Wounds is a thing, just so people understand, but I'm also playing Devil's Advocate, right? One of the things I know they said they changed is they nerfed uh, that one weapon from Gnomergon that gives a lot of attack speed, so they're gonna make up for it in the tree. Stuff like Tiger's Fury gives 30% attack speed now, which is really cool. You've got your Berserk. This is interesting. Feral Adrenaline, suffering a physical crit while in bear form or cat form, increases your chance to dodge by 45%. That's insane. It's only every 30 seconds, to be fair, but essentially you're gonna get crit every time, right? So if you're like dueling somebody like a warrior or a rogue in cat form, you just straight up dodge, you know, the mortal strength strike that comes at you right like okay or it might you might just dodge an auto attack to be fair but still 20% strength by the way in cat form with heart of the wild resto i know they changed tranquility to be like a 10 minute or something maybe even 30 minute cooldown uh, but they made it giga strong and affect the whole raid. That's interesting. I'm not sure how that's going to work out, but that is at least interesting trying to get different healers in there. They have tree of life form, of course, in TWoW, which is really, really cool. Uh, but yeah, overall, those are all the uh, changes to all the different trees that I thought were particularly interesting or impactful. And as you can see, Turtle Wow is cooking on impeccable levels, right? All right, brothers. So this video got way too long. I'm going to very quickly, very quickly show you the Goblin and High Elf stuff. Uh, I am currently in this bed badass place. A lot the loss, a city up here on the top left part of the Eastern Kingdoms. I was questing on the Isle of Eternal Autumn when I logged out, uh, and I hopefully will not die. This is beautiful. It's a bright, you know, sunny day, so you really get to see everything. Stun that guy and keep running. I am on my way to the city right now, but I wanted to show you how beautiful it looks just kind of like going through this zone, because uh, even though it's a very, very quick snippet of it all, you deserve to see this. I mean, it's just absolutely gorgeous. You have wild hawk striders, by the way, which just adds so much. Uh, I won't spoil the story, but I will say it is cohesive. Uh, it's really, really cool. I can see the guy patrolling over there in the distance. Uh, but yeah, it's just really beautiful. Almost there, but we have cool stuff like the last runestone. You know that from Warcraft 3. Anisterian Park, the far stride. And then, my friends, we roll up on Alothalos, which, again, is not meant to be a humongous city. It's the remnants of the High Elves. This is what they've got. So I will just run through this city as I talk to you guys. I did quest through this place. As you can see, I already have a bunch of quests. I got through most of it already. I did it with a friend of mine. The friend of mine is actually a, one of those guys that uh, he can be brutal with his opinions sometimes because he has a high quality bar and he gave this a 9 out of 10. So that to me says so freaking much. If he thinks it's that good, I promise you it's really good. I am inclined to agree. The questing, very, very good. The story, the writing, impeccable. The attention to detail and stuff like that, very impeccable. Um, the city, the world building, the environment, all of that. Turtle Wow gives you the full package. That's one of the things I love so much about this server. Again, now that we're getting class changes, we're truly getting the fullest package humanly possible. And it's just overall extremely exciting. There's nothing I like more than knowing that when I come to TWoW, I'm actually going to get every aspect of a full new expansion. Not part of it, not just endgame, not just a talent or three or 10 or even 50, but instead everything. And uh, it's just a wonderful experience overall. As you can see, they give you absolutely beautiful architecture that really makes you feel like it's a high elf city. You got the statues as well, the fountains, everything is beautiful, but it's very, very specifically high elf with a bazaar in the middle and a spire. There's a wretched ghetto. I don't want to spoil completely every aspect of it, let's just say, but I will say absolutely, look at that statue. Beautiful, perfect, exactly what you would want from something like this absolutely did not disappoint. I am gonna run over to the statue. There's a big dock right here. It's the Windrunner Pier, by the way. Uh, and it just is something to, well, I, I should just say it's a sight to behold, okay? And it makes me happy on a deep, profound level. So as we roll up to this statue, I will prep myself very soon to show you guys the goblin. I haven't done the new goblin place yet, but I did do the original one on Boom Boy, so I will notice the differences right away. 
uh, and I will briefly show you guys that, but look at this beauty. You know, this level of absolute customization, there's a boat right there, by the way, but this level of customization I haven't seen since, like, believe it or not, the Naruto server. Just, I mean, you have to think about it. The statue's facing the water for the sake of it being logical, right? They still put in the detail to it. So GG to you guys for that. Oh my god black ash coal pits where oh my god that's a blackstone island dude what the hell i didn't expect this at all because of course you go to stone talon peaks before right powder town but dude they're telling a real the real freaking story of goblins i'm assuming here. this is sick we're just gonna run through it but uh this might deserve another playthrough of a goblin, at least at some point, to check out the whole thing. This is already looking sick. Completely different. This is the chemical super freak that you're losing, by the way, the alchemy skill. We did talk about that for a second. We can uh, exit strategy to go a bit faster for a bit. You might be noticing I'm using the Dragonflight UI add-on. That's super cool. Listen to this music. We're cooking, bro. Rustgate Ridge. Not too bad for a custom goblin starter zone. Blackstone Island, huh? Couldn't even kill the rat. We won't talk. Oh, he died. Okay, we will talk about it. He died. So we've got faulty Battletrons. We've got Ash Feather Swoopers. And then we've got Black Venom Scorpids, which is some genuine continuity from Duratar being right there. Yeah, I know it's stupid, but I do like stuff like that. Ogre is over there as well, I'm noticing. Ventureco. Ah, the Ventureco is here. Venture Company. That's very interesting. The Roach. I can't one-shot the Roach. We don't talk- Okay, we will talk about it. He died. Okay, I might die to this cartographer. His fireball only hit me for 18, actually. Oh, he hits fast. Never mind. <laughs> okay, he has a high cast time. Holy crap. All right, let's keep going. I want to at least hit the middle of the island. Oh, God. So in the middle, we have the Black Ash Mine. So it looks like it's all very similar in terms of the aesthetic. So, you, I, you know, I'm going to die, right? Yep. And I died. But hey, we got a good look at the freaking... Uh, yeah, the Blackstone Island, conceptually speaking, insane. The fact that they keep adding these islands, like Tel Abib over here, or freaking Lapidus and Gilligim's Isle, super freaking hype. Blackstone Isle, though, or Island, that's really cool. So, my friends, here on the ground, we will end the video. Tell me what you think of all the brand new changes, the gameplay, the talents, the new starter zones. Obviously, you have custom music, custom everything, custom reputation stuff. I mean, they have so much awesome stuff in Turtle WoW, and I'm thinking another playthrough might happen. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like and a subscribe. Major thanks to all the members of my channel. I love and appreciate you, but I'll see all of you on the next one, and McDoubles out.